and welcome to this episode of Dial in Decent. We've got Carl Thoreau from Canada with us today. He has brought us his beans. Now, the way we know about his beans is Bucks and I were at a Hong Kong coffee festival on Saturday, and there was Cole at a stand making a whole bunch of pour overs, and a lot of very educated Hong Kongers trying them. And uh, I was super impressed. I, I um, of the three coffees, uh, I'd say only one was a dud, two others were wows, and I'm a jaded man. So um, <laughs> two wows was quite good. So we asked Cole if he had any free time, he, he has, to come in. And what I really wanted uh, Paul here to focus on is because I tried these as pour versus filter coffee, and they were really good, I wanted to know what does this machine do with these kinds of beans? Does it do it justice? Is it worse? Is it better? Is it different? What? I haven't tasted anything. These guys have tasted. So, <laughs> Cole, could you talk a little bit about what you're doing with beans? Why are you in Hong Kong? Sure. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks for having me here. Great, great to be here. Awesome to be on set. Uh, I have a business called Forward Specialty Green Coffee Importers. So, mm -hmm. I'm an e-commerce platform. I sell uh, I like to think of it like a wine shop, where rather than going to a vineyard and buying a case of wine, I'll do that work, and then I'll offer that out in bottles to, to clients. So therefore, you can try a whole bunch of different different things, get to know what you're into, what you're not into, which one's the dud, which ones are the winners. Mm -hmm. uh, so doing that with coffee and taking uh, you know, 10, 20, 30 kilo increments of coffee and shrinking them down into one kilogram uh, vacuum sealed bags yeah. and selling them in green. So raw, unroasted, uh, looking to target not just the, the commercial side of the industry, but also home roasters, because I know there's been a big boom in the home roaster market in the past couple of years, especially here in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. uh, so everything is online, www.forward.coffee. Okay, and so people are buying your green beans. Are, is there any sort of form where people talk about their experience with it? How, any tips on how to roast it? So I, I just started a Discord. Okay, excellent. There's a Discord community that's that's starting, which is great. Uh, there's maybe 50 or 60 people in there right now. That's the awesome. chatter is kind of just just beginning. It's really me asking people, hey, how do I roast this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot more experts in the room, so uh, yeah. looking to use the community to, to grow my own personal knowledge, mm -hmm. but also uh, collectively. I think that up. makes a lot of sense um, on the Decent Diaspora, which is our owner forum. There's a coffee of the month, and they pick a coffee. Everyone buys that coffee, it okay. can be anywhere, and then they all agree to work on it together. And one of the things we found is a number of um, brewing techniques have come out of that. As everyone's tasted it and gone, yeah, not quite there, and then people will try things and then share. And then part of that is something called visualizer.coffee, which is a website as people make shots here and they make their recipes, they're uploaded to visualizer. So one person might say, I think I nailed it. And then they can go to that person's visualizer, download the profile and try it on their machine, and then iterate, iterate, okay. bounce back and forth. Uh, because I feel like, I, I learned this, this term knife edge coffees, right? Coffees that are on the knife edge of being gorgeous and awful. Sure. <laughs> and, 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 and the more expensive, the more delicate, the more knife edge right. it is. <laughs> right. And, and that can be frustrating, especially if you've got limited beans. Yep. And so the community working together to try and not make it so difficult to brew these gorgeous coffees, I think is, is interesting. So um, at lunch, we're talking about some various techniques that I'd like to use for light roast. Um, Allongé is the one I use the most for light roast because it gives me a lot of fruit, not much acidity, uh, and uh, not much mouthfeel. It's more like a filter coffee thing, except much brighter than filter coffee usually is. Then the filter 2.1, which is Scott Rayo's way of making filter brews, but in a normal porta filter basket, and that will taste much more like a filter. And um, those are the two that I know we're gonna do. And I think Paul's got uh, uh, something interesting of his sleeve. So uh, literally, um, we just pulled up Turbo Turbo just prior to coming on live. And um, didn't plan to do this, but uh, Cole wanted to try it as a, a Turbo Turbo. And it's a, it's a lovely geisha. And I wish you guys could smell it because since we opened these bags and started pulling, it smelled absolutely fantastic in here. So please do check out his website. He's got some. Hey, really Cole, good can stuff. you actually tell us what the bean is here? Um, yeah, you so know what it is. So I brought two coffees today. This is the first one that we've been playing with. So it's a coffee from Panama from a producer named Jameson Savage. 
Uh, the farm is called the Finca Debra. It's on the Vulcan side of of, uh, Panama, of uh, Boquete. So there's there's a Vulcan Baru kind of in the middle that separates Boquete and Vulcan. This is on the Vulcan side. It's a uh, process called Vivid. So uh, Jameson is famous for carbonic maceration. So kind of taking a borrowing idea from the wine industry, stainless steel tanks, uh, CO2 being pressurized into the tanks to kind of crush in wine, whole clusters, in coffee, kind of break down the cell structure and help uh, sort of metabolize and, and begin the fermentation. So often very juicy, floral, yes. um, fragrant type, type of coffees, aromatic type coffees. So this one is a whole cherry CM that he then uh, completely cleans the cherry off and finishes it as a washed coffee. I did a little bit of homework and I saw that Decent really loves washed coffees. So <laughs> made sure that the coffees I brought were, were of a washed styling. And uh, so this is a, a vivid geisha from Jameson Savage in uh, Panama. Okay. Fantastic. Nice, um, nice. So did you just make this or what, what, yeah, how are we starting here? Um, so I literally just dialed it in. Um, we've uh, So the Turbo Turbo profile that we're using, one of the uh, profile descriptions is um, to have your grind setting and have the, if I can bring it so up. So let's pull it up, thank you. Yeah. So um, one of the, um, in the, in the descriptions you can see it, uh, it says set your grind to have an ending flow rate of three or four and a half ml a second. So we literally just achieved that in the last shot that we did. And um, I would say this is our first tasting of this as a Turbo Turbo. Um, I'm quite interested to see what you think of it. Um, I've got in my mind what I would try and change. Um, and judging from your reaction, I think you kind of know what I want about. But uh, what did you think about this shot as a, as a Turbo Turbo? Um, bear in mind that this is pretty, pretty light. Um, so just to explain, Turbo Turbo is a uh, quickly made shot at a fast flow rate. So kind of like an allongé, but a lot shorter came out of the whole Chris Hendon paper on coarser, faster shots being a good way to do light roasts. So this is the first time we've made them and it's not something I know well. So what do you think? So coffee's definitely right, definitely light, mm -hmm. uh, not not flavor in the cap roast profile. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I roasted on a stronghold. I'm I'm not the expert roaster. I, I'm more of the, the sourcing, buying, tasting, that, yeah. that side of things. And I trust other roasters to, to do justice to beans. Um, so I'm, I'm more than happy to nitpick my own roast here. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is a little bit sharp for me. The acidity yes. is a little bit pointy for totally sure. Agree. I would love to see that get a little bit more refined and pulled into the, the sweetness yeah. of the body. Yeah. I think the body for me is, is nice. Yeah, it's pretty There's cool. some body actually to it. Yeah. It's like it's got a little like glucine. You say that with kind surprise? Of, I was surprised because the Allongé has none. Okay. And so I'm comparing Allongé with this because they're kind of similar. Um, I also much more increased um, TDS yeah. on this. I, I For me, it's a really pleasing concentration. It's not espresso hitting me in the face, but it's not kind of a, a mellow filter TDS. Mm. Um, I'm not having a problem with the acidity level. It's not, I, I usually don't like much acidity. Okay. This is still yummy. It's making my mouth water a bit with a little acidity. Um, I'm, I'm really already happy okay. with this. I mean, the perfume is awesome on it. So D definitely uh, these, these coffees are high altitude, high density, highly compact and complex coffees. So I think with espresso, we could probably go longer in terms of yield mm -hmm. and still find some good results and still uh, ideally stray away from, from astringency, dryness type of thing. Um, this is a coffee that, maybe not this process specifically, but Finca Debra has often been used in the World Barista Championship. And uh, you know, highly complex, multi-flavor multi call in, in that sort of realm of competition. Okay, um, I would probably not pull out the turbo turbo shot longer because then we wouldn't be doing a turbo turbo shot. We'd be moving to Avalanche. Okay. Because that's really the big difference between them. They're both fast flow shots. Got it. And I agree with you. Um, it's holding together. There aren't any defects yet. So we could pull this a lot longer. Yeah. Get. Okay. Um, but you want to pull another turbo shot and you're going to change this in some way? What? Um, I could... Um, we could increase the bar a little bit more. Um, 
And I, I, as uh, just prior to the uh, 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 the live, I was basically saying to Cole how I prefer a slightly higher pressure on a turbo. Um, so we could try this out and see where we are at, and we might draw out a little bit more sweetness and um, essentially balance out that lucidity a little bit more. But um, we could also look at elongating the ratio as well, just to make that uh, initial acidity a bit more smoother uh, and a bit more pleasant. So what was our grams in, grams out here? Uh, grams in was 15 mm -hmm. and we got 36 out. Okay, in what kind of time? Uh, time, didn't note down the time, but we re did reach the ending flow rate of uh, four and a half. Okay. So it wasn't very, very fast. Um, and by the time I was talking at the time, by the time I was looking over, it was about ready to stop. So. Um, yeah. Okay, do you need, have you got weighed beans? You need a bar back? Yep, I've, I've got some beans here. So, um, you said 15? Yeah, yeah, 15. And we're going to be using the P100 for most of this since that's what we would want to use for lighter roast beans. Is yeah, that right? that's correct. Yeah. Okay. So because we are increasing the bar pressure, I am going to adjust the uh, P100 by one notch. So the current setting is at six, and the previous lesson was at seven. Okay. All right, 15 grams for you. Okay, thank you very much, Carl. I like the aftertaste. It's, it's pleasant, it's sitting on the bit of mm. Yeah, I'm getting more pith later on mm. that I didn't get so much initially. Um, Are you pretty pissed about it? I'm not too pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> it is a new coffee joke, so well done there. Unless, you, unless that's part of your stand repertoire, I don't uh, know. I, I've used it once or twice. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So when you were doing this as a filter coffee, so I'm talking to Cole while he does his thing, um, did you find this to open up significantly more, or how, what were you look, what were you getting that you're not getting here? Yeah, I think uh, I always find espresso. You know, how how do we unpack the flavors on complex coffees? This being a complex coffee, I think uh, as a pour over of the weekend, it was it was very floral. It had good citrus. Mm -hmm. It had some stone fruit. It, it's sort of a delicacy to it, an elegance, but also showed the complexity. Okay. Um, I think this is maybe, uh, so we tried it as a filter 2.1 just before going on camera, and I, I think uh, saw some good sweetness in there and saw some maybe maybe comparable attributes that, mm. that I would have on a, a pour over. Um, here, I think it would be awesome if we could unlock some florals and I know there's not a button on there to just you know, <laughs> take the florals out uh, but that's that's something I, I personally love about Panama Geisha you know that that sort of perfumed element yeah, yeah. Um, so if we could un unlock a little bit of that I think that'd be fantastic okay. uh, and this might just not be the right recipe to, to do that with uh, right. I think that we're just not getting a lot of water contact time on, on a bean that's probably not super soluble yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. As I mentioned, I'm I'm not the guy you want roasting at the end of the day. <laughs> what was the time on that one? Was that twenty seconds? So yeah, just under twenty seconds. So this one, um, I pulled the flow rate a little bit slower. Okay. So to try and get a little bit more out of there, um, but the ending flow rate was just under, just over three. So a little bit uh, lower on the ending flow rate as well. So a slightly slower um, extraction compared to the last okay. one. Uh, for me, it's a lot more bitey. Uh, mm. it's, for me, it's a step backwards. Uh, mm. It also is warmer, so maybe I'm not tasting as much. Um, but I, I, it's more boring. Yeah, as well. Mm, yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh, we, we've lost a lot of its floral characteristics in the nose. I think not too exciting. So yeah, 
um, unless colas is what you think the mm -hmm. coffee should taste like, let's move on. Sure. Can we make a filter 2-1? Yes, yes, uh, yeah, okay. we can it's make a filter 2-1. And do we need to change the grind as well? Uh, change to 27, so we just literally dialed that in. I'm going to let you do that. Sure, no problem. Let's get an extreme close-up of you dialing that in. <laughs> you need 12 grams for that. Yes, okay. please, that would be fantastic. And I'm just going to change my quarter filler handle, so it's an 18 gram basket, not a 15, since it's um, one of the requirements of the recipe. So it is a 12 gram dose in a 18 gram basket, and the P100 is at 27. Okay. All right, so. Just to walk through what you're doing here, you've got a big filter and a small filter. Yep, so you're just going to pre wet them. those. And then while we're prepping, I'm going to fill my water for the recipe. Um, I think I will do a little bit less water than I normally do. It's, it's really delicate. Okay, so I'm just going to dose 120 uh, milliliters of water this time. We probably won't use it all, uh, judging from what we tasted before. Um, but. Uh, continuation on with this recipe is that I usually dose a little bit more and dilute a little bit less um, because you can't take it back once you put it back in so okay so wet filter at the bottom okay and then loading into the P100 and hot start will we change this any? No haven't changed it yet. Okay so this needs to go to 27 And from memory, I think, Cole, we said um, we could go a little bit coarser, right? To get rid of that extra bar pressure. So we'll yep. see how that goes. Yep, okay. And um, we shall now do a That's a fast grinder. It's very fast. <laughs> Just a light rake. I don't go all the way because I don't want to disturb the filter paper at the bottom. Mm. And so it's just a light rake on the top to get a good foundation for a little kiss tamp, as we coined it now. And not a heavy tamp. Not that, a heavy apparently tamp. Apparently, a heavy handed buck went <laughs> over here. Um, <laughs> since we are essentially making a filter coffee, tamping is just going to impede water flow. Yeah. Right. So just enough to have a bit of puck integrity. And and that's it. That's that. And you can okay. see it's even a little higher. And then, uh, and then the slightly larger filter paper on top. That's right. Okay. Okay. So load up the profile. I think because we're going from a lower profile to a hotter one, it might need some time to heat up, which it is. So sometimes you might see this on a, on a profile where you get the red lights on the top. Don't be alarmed. It's just the D1 doing its thing and making sure you're... you're, you're yeah, just to be clear, the, the uh, group head is aiming to be the same temperature as the wire temperature. And it took about, about three, four seconds for yeah, that to happen. Not very long, for, from 80 or about 10 degrees, if it was. Okay. So this is going to be like watching paint dry. <laughs> <laughs> the exciting part is at the start. So, you know, this is one of the profiles that you generally need to watch at the start um, and the start being the bar's pressure. So if I zoom this in and get the one to the top. So we have improved slightly from our, from our first shot. So if it was initially up to here and we've made half a knot change and probably decreased the bar pressure by about 0.1 to 0.15. Um, so this should be a better brew, uh, but the first brew that we tried was quite delicious actually and um, I actually wanted to drink more of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, it's for the, the camera for the two of us, great. Um, so Cole uh, is a ambassador for Delacorte, yeah. uh, which makes a number of very nice machines that can do flow profiling and a lot of the things we're doing here on the Decent can also be done on the Delacorte. And one of the things I wanted to talk about today was some of these um, methods of extraction and how you would do them on another flow profiling machine. So Paul, can you just explain what, obviously we saw the, the puck being made, mm -hmm. so anyone can do that on a Delacorte. Um, one of the things we talked about is Delacorte is a 54 mil basket, yeah. but has an adapter to 58. 
So I would go to the 50 adapter for these so that the recipes work the same. That was 15 grams, mm -hmm. fairly coarse. Now, um, what, what kind of flow are we doing here and for how long? What's going on? Um, so the pre-infusion is, uh, uh, is quite similar to the ending in that for this recipe, it's two milliliters filled, uh, okay. fill rate. Um, and that is uh, all to essentially um, create a shot that is almost no pressure. So we're, we're trying to control the level of pressure during pre-infusion. And then once pre-infusion is done, we're just literally creating a slurry and maintaining that slurry by uh, providing a 0.1 flow rate on the top. Okay, so we're two mils per second. Mm -hmm. And then how do you know when to go to one mil per second? Um, that will be in the, so the pre-infusion is split into three. Mm -hmm. um, in the second one, it starts to go to 0.1 because we've already built the slurry on the top. Okay. And then once that is moved on by time, okay. um, it will have a third pre-infusion step, which will have a 0.3 bar uh, move on if. Oh, so it's using pressure. Yes. Okay. Yes. That, that's not going to work on the Mina. So let's um, see what happened here. I mean, looking at this shot, um, the, the flow rate is just what? It's less. 0. 0.5 mils per second? Is that where we are? Uh, it's oh. probably, this, this dotted line here is 0.1. Oh, okay. So yeah. it really is just dripping water in. So the pre infusion stage um, is wet the puck, mm -hmm. and then once you start to see water, drop it down the 0.1. Yes. And for about how much time and how much in cup? Um, so this was uh, 100 seconds, and in cup was uh, 1 to 3, so 36. Okay. Yeah. And pre-infusion was about how many seconds? Uh, roughly about five. Okay, so I think easiest way to think about this, I think you're saying, is about five seconds at two mils per second and then drop to point 0.1 yep. for 30 seconds until you reach that. What's your ratio? I think you can do that in Amina without a problem. I believe the lowest you can go in Amina is 0.5 okay. Okay. grams okay. per okay. second. Okay. Mm. Okay. okay, that might be an issue. Maybe, uh, would you, can you... Are there faster flow rates for larger versions of this filter 2.0? Yes, so the original 2.1 um, is at three, but it's for a, I think it was 16 gram dose. Okay. Um, but there is one which he did do a larger dose, but that may be filter one, which he used the 24 gram. Okay. Bag so I would say um, experiment, maybe. Uh, it sounds like with greater doses, we do faster flow rates. So maybe an 18 gram dose might work with that 0.5. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, but uh, see if you get something yummy. Uh, speaking with something yummy, do we have some images? Yes, yes. So that is your cup. Okay, so I think we added the ounce and a half last time to water. So I believe so, yeah. We'll do the same. So right, probably about 45. Okay, let's see it there and we'll so I've just added 40 uh, ml of water. Okay. Um, let's see where we're at. I mean, visibly, the, the color of it looks like what I, where I would be with the filter coffee, yeah, which is, see, yeah. is fantastic. I mean, we're back to a gorgeous nose. Yeah. Uh, I'd say it's superior to that first yes. uh, turbo. There's a lot of complexity. There's almost a little bit of tropicals coming out now. Mm. Um, but our TDS has crashed. Yeah. We're, now, we're now... It's very soft. Very, yeah. So you notice how, and last time we did the filter 2.1, I mm. probably added an extra ounce on top. Mm. Um, so it is very coffee dependent and yeah, it's... Do you regret adding that much water now? I actually really liked it as a three to one. I don't, I don't know, but I quite like that intensity of yeah. it. Um, but it was delicate at the same time. Um, so, if, I think if it was me at home, I'd probably drink this maybe no more than three and a half, four ounces in total. Yes. Um, and I think it's much more, much more enjoyable that way. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, you know, this coffee is super delicate and it'd be a shame to lose all those delicacies. Right. So mm -hmm. I think right. it, it will suit it. It's super balanced, super easy to, to drink. Mm -hmm. Like this is, yes. if, I, if I was served this in a coffee shop with no context of how it was made and, mm. and what happened over here, I would... I'd be pretty happy with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd agree with that. Um, serving anything along this level in a cafe is just very refreshing, actually, mm. sometimes. Yeah. Um, but um, mm. it does not give me palate fatigue, both because of the complexity and because it's not concentrated. Mm. Yeah. Um, I would love to go back and try an allonger. Sure. So I want to see if we get a ton of floral and fruit. 
Um, and while you're doing that, so he's going to switch to the Alangi recipe and prepare. We have one or more questions. So what do we have? Okay. Yeah, so I want to say, would that bird be more, more optimal for the light roasting coarser, fast flowing shot? Cool. Do you want to answer that? Sorry, could you say the question one more time? Would that bird be more optimal for the light roasting coarser, fast flowing shot? Uh, so I I generally use flat burrs. I I prefer flat burrs. I big flat burrs or like sixty four mil or where, where are you at? I I vary. So on espresso at home, we often use either an EK mm -hmm. or we use a, a Mythos, not the My seventy five, but a previous version, also not the one. I think they're a fifty eight millimeter burr set. Okay, if I've got that right. Um, so that's that's what I'm. A big range, obviously. I mean, yeah. those EKs are almost twice as large. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, and that's for filter. You're using that. You're using that for filter and for espresso. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you find that your EK is giving you uh, a lot of channeling if you're doing it with espresso, or it's working like a dream? Uh, depends on the coffee. I think I think this light profile might mm -hmm. show me a little bit of a channel. Yeah. Uh, depending on puck prep and and whatnot, it, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, espresso is also on a traditional nine bar. Espresso, this this coffee would be, I think, difficult. But I think that the fact that we can uh, tailor different variables, flow, pressure, temperature, to mm -hmm. uh, to sort of situate and suit the roast profile, mm -hmm. is definitely helping us out here. I think uh, nine bar, nine grams per second, nine and a half grams per second, wherever sort of industry standard is, would be would be challenging with this particular yeah. roast profile. Um, I. It's something I've tried to focus on is all these, this whole world of subtlety in espresso generally doesn't work with nine bar. Right. And I feel like the Lieber folks have known that for quite a while. And they've done, for example, six bar shots, mm. longer shots, all sorts of different things uh, because they can experiment, especially the manual Lieber people right. uh, who, can, who can play around. Right. Um, and they've been playing around for a while, which, which is kind of neat. Um, I think what's what we're trying to do it's a bit different here is I guess make it repeatable by having it programmed in. Yep. Uh, I yep. was showing you earlier that you can control the flow rate and pressure with the group head, but you're not going to see us do that in any of these because generally we want the same shot more than once. And if you start to do it by hand, then everyone is varying quite a lot. And then there's no way to tell the people, here's what works, here's what doesn't. Right. Which I think is really important because if I go into a coffee shop, let's say I've got my regular shop, I go Monday to Friday, you know, and, and Paul's on bar Monday and makes me a fantastic espresso, and then John, you're on bar the next day. Mm, and it's a terrible espresso. Maybe it's, <laughs> maybe it's better, maybe it's worse. You, you, chose, you chose the words, maybe it's better, maybe it's worse. Um, that, that consistency, I think, is hypercritical in the success of a coffee shop. Yeah. And if we can deliver, let's say, a seven out of 10, yeah. you know, yeah. awesome, there's room for improvement, but let's, let's at least flatline and, and find where we are, what we can achieve, and I think our, our tools and our technology is what is going to get us to to consistency. I think using scales, yeah. you know, in the past maybe five to eight years in coffee shops has, has really changed the way that, that we work as baristas. I think using uh, new, new types of profiling on espresso machines and, and new type of, of tech and understanding of analysis is really bringing more consistency mm -hmm. to your day-to-day -day coffee shop, which is, is really going to change that for Joe Schmo or whoever's coming in for, for a drink because you know, they don't really maybe care about the nuance of, of what we're talking about and what we're geeking yeah. out on right now, but they just want something that's good every single time and consistent every yeah. single time. I mean, that was one of the things I, I got from everything I know about uh, running coffee shops, the book, mm -hmm. was people are creatures of habit and if they like the coffee someplace, they'll go every day and they won't even consider the place across the street that might be better yeah. until the day they have a bad coffee. <laughs> and it just takes one bad coffee for them to go, I'm going to try the other place. Right. And like mediocre but consistent is better than occasionally brilliant. Yeah. Because yeah. that will get your customers wandering around. Uh, right. Now, I don't know how many people watching this are running in a cafe. But, um, I mean, the reason we called it Decent Espresso is I didn't want to get... Uh, everyone's hopes up that it would be mind-blowing coffee every day. What I wanted was a really acceptable level 
reliably. And then as the years proceeded, as we got better, as you got better, that level got up. Mm. And I'd say the last year, the focus in the decent community has been getting rid of really off the cross, okay. rather than making the most amazing, even more amazing. Right, right. Uh, Which, again, I think is really important on all aspects. If we can raise the floor, mm -hmm. it, it in tandem pushes the ceiling, right? It's true. Uh, if that, that's what you accept now every day. And um, we were just, I was making some bad shots uh, right before this, probably because Paul had adjusted the grinder and I hadn't realized it. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, I should say I forgot to remove it back. So that's the okay. yeah, right? <laughs> um, But what I was doing is I was keeping all the shots and I told Cole that's going into Friday's ice cream. Um, so having a sink for coffee that is just not as good as you're willing to accept right now, but not wasting it, yep. I feel yep. pretty good about. Yeah. I like the ice cream idea. Um, ice cream with light roast is amazing because that whole uh, dark roast burn charcoal thing is just not pleasant frozen. No. Whereas acidity is really tamed when, you're, when your palate is doing something quite cold and all those floral characteristics come off because the ice cream as it melts releases um, all those, those aromatics. Mm. So uh, it's always, I've mentioned before on the show, it's always what I do when I get tons of good copies after a show. Make ice cream. Where are we at? Um, so I'm what was wrong with the, the one you just made? So the one I just made was uh, in gush, basically. So I didn't make pressure. Um, ah, okay, what, so it was, it was too coarse. Yeah, so what, what is catching me off with this particular bean is it's actually a lot lighter than anything I'm used to working with on the P100. Okay. So um, my regular grind changes, even though they're really big, um, have not as been as effective as I wanted to. I think you should try it. You should still try this. Yeah, um, yeah. First yeah. of all, I, it's, I, still, I purposely didn't throw it's still quite fragrant, even though it was too fast. It's a bit more aggressive. Um, but the mouthfeel is kind of the world we're expecting. It's quite interesting dialing in a Rau Allonge as you're going under and you're tasting it as it builds up in pressure. Um, you can really find the sweet spot in this because I find that some coffees perform a lot better in seven to eight range. Some prefer the full nine bar. Um, so actually, I prefer doing it this way around, dialing in a Raoul Langer than the other way around. So uh, here's, I, I'm pretty sure that you can make this at home on your mm. flow profiling machines. What the Raoul Langer is, is four and a half mils per second, usually four to four and a half in that range. Um, going for 15 in, 90 out, so six times ratio. And here's the crucial part. You're looking for espresso pressure, somewhere between six and 10 bar. Yep. Okay, so when he calls a gusher, it means we didn't build any pressure. And that's essentially a fast filter coffee. It's essentially bypass, it's, it's not delicious. It's not as bad as it could be. But if we nail it, what's kind of mind blowing about this is that if you can get espresso pressure out of an espresso dose, you still make espresso, even though the flow rate's super fast. And what we can do is, because this is a poorly soluble bean, we're gonna get way more out of this. So it's essentially an espresso, but with fast flow, so we should get a nice extraction out of the light roast. Okay. That's what we're trying to get to. Um, do we have any other questions, or are we good, Mohammed? Uh, no, just someone on the very first shot you guys pulled after we went on air, yeah. commented on the temperature being pretty low. He said, wow, well, low temperature, 70 Celsius. Okay. Ah, yes, so that was on the, uh, the decline of the um, profile. So if you can access the profile, so I can load it up right now, um, I can show you. Um, so just from the graph alone, you can see the red line has a, has a sort of a, a step down. Um, that basically signifies the, the temperature and a decline, depending on which phase it is. So I can tap there. Yeah. Um, and um, the reason why the declines in there is is basically so we can push the extraction. And as we were discussing earlier, John mentioned that I'm per well, it's purposely under extracting, mm. um, and that's what it's doing. But the reason for that is so you can essentially reach your volume in cup um, and and draw out those extractions. So. It's, it's kind of like a balancing act. Um, so sometimes the temperature profiles uh, that are set don't really make sense. 
Um, but as I was playing to Cole a little bit earlier as well, it's, it's, it's very flavor driven. So even if sometimes the temperature is not exactly as it is set at, um, I'm pretty certain that the person designed the, uh, the profile has, has tasted it and has got successful results out of it. So uh, don't be alarmed by it, but just give it a go and see if it works out for you. Um, in general, this profile is more suited to the lighter roast. Um, and, 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 and that would be what was not making sense with the temperature because okay. generally we have higher temperatures with a, with a lighter roast. Okay. Yeah. Um, wh where does the temperature start on that profile? So the temperature is 88, uh, 86, 86.5. 86. So well, I need to explain that um, because the temperatures seem low, mm. but there's a reason for that. Right. Okay. Which is normally with espresso, you've got a dense puck. You put some water in, the puck then compresses, and then your flow rate's really slow. Mm -hmm. That puck started off at room temperature. So you want fairly hot water to go in there because you're not adding that much water anymore. Okay? If you go with a much coarser bean, a coarser grind, then you keep adding water and it keeps flowing through quickly. And so you're able to add hugely more heat to that coffee puck with a faster flow rate. So in general, slower flow rate, higher temperature. And that's why like Italian espresso is at 96, 98 Celsius, and it just goes drip, 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 because while the temperature's high, not that much water got added to the slurry. Faster flow, a lot of water added to the slurry, and the temperature is, uh, the puck is already up there. And then what he's talking about in terms of declining temperature, the, the theory goes that you extract most of the good stuff at the beginning, and then there's less and less good stuff. So he's essentially slowing down the extraction rate by lowering the temperature. Right. So yep. we can go further. Uh, so uh, most espressos have the opposite, which is they start off cool and then they increase in temperature because they use boilers that have a constant water temperature. And the slurry is then slowly coming up to the input water temperature. So okay. they start down here around 80 and then end up at say 96, 98, whatever your end temperature is. And with the decent, we tend to start six degrees under, because remember that coffee puck is room temperature, quickly get to room, get to the temperature, and then have the machine drive the temperature down. Got it. Ooh, got the wrong profile on. Got the wrong profile. Let's see if we can recover from that. That's a long pre-infusion. Let's see what happens. I'm looking for is a bit of pressure and yeah I think it's a dud. You got three bar of pressure. Oh, All right. I'm ready. 15 grips? Yeah. You've seen the massive grind chains have gone all the way almost 20. Uh, are you using any filter paper on this album? No. Okay. Uh, uh, filter paper is something I do a lot with Allonger if okay. I'm using large flat. All right. Because the large flat in the Allonger tends to channel badly okay. and filter paper on the bottom for me, with the key was a lifesaver, and I think I went like four notches um, coarser, coarser when I put the filter paper on my key. Ah, uh, okay, so. So I think maybe leave the grinder where it's at, okay. put a piece of filter paper on the bottom, uh, a drop of water just to keep it in place, All right. and let's run it again and see if we get lucky. So we're keeping it where it's at? We're keeping it where it's at. Okay, I just moved it before. Okay. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm right here and we're gonna see more pressure because we have more puck integrity. Okay, the last one was at 3R. So hopefully it'll go up to six, seven bar. Would be nice. Set some uh, remaining yep. bean.
doses out there. Uh, yeah, I mean, built a nice little mountain. I, I, it's I, it's a beautiful fluffy mound, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So one thing we have modded it. Um, when you get this grinder, it has a fork here, okay. and that is my only complaint on this. The grind quality is gorgeous. But the fork, you have to hold the portafilter in the fork, otherwise it vibrates and the portafilter falls out. If you're not paying attention, you now have grounds all over the table. Okay. Um, and both the P64 and P100 have that aspect. Um, and that is my only complaint for what is otherwise an amazing grinder. And right. what we do is we just we put a scale on the portafilter stand here and then move this back and forth so that the mound is going in the center. What are you, what are you, you don't know what to do with it? No, I don't. don't I, yeah, pour it down the sink. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to make ice cream with that. I cannot make ice cream with Allonger or filter coffee because it's just not concentrated enough. Oh, it doesn't have the intensity for it? Yeah. 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 Uh, what I can do is cold brew with it, but... All right, let's see how we're doing here. Okay. Ah, you go right. Yep. I'm going to just decrease that. So, right. And hopefully what's going to happen, the other thing about the filter paper is I don't get a pressure cache. All right, see how I, I went up to about nine bar, and now we are holding around seven bar, which is awesome. And this flick, this pressure flick up is super interesting. I asked Gagne about it, and he says, absolutely, that is fines migration. So when you have constant flow, <laughs> we got to 100. When you have uh, constant flow like we have here, then essentially the pressure curve is telling us what the puck integrity is. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So it's how much pressure got, comes from this much flow. And you would normally expect pressure to come down permanently as you erode the puck. Right, right. But there's this weird phenomenon, and it's really clear with this. With fast-flowing water, it's like panning for gold. All those fines that are in there are migrating down, and they are slowly clogging up the bottom and giving you essentially more resistance. Not a huge amount, but enough that this flick is always visible. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Let's taste this baby. Yeah. Fascinating. Uh, it looks good on paper, as they say. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, these two are right here. Okay. Um, and one downer about the Allonger is because it's such fast flow, it's super hot. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that's okay. kind of why we gave you a ceramic cup. And Okay, I'll let it sit before it is super hot. It's really hot. Ooh, it smells nice, though. Yeah, it does smell great. Was this, this is just water, this one here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I am going to use this as my cooling cup. Ooh. Too hot? Is that an ooh that's too hot? Or no, ooh, it's, um, it tastes nice. It's, there's a lot going on in there. Mm. I don't um, think if you want to cool it in there, that's got a lot of mass. I didn't expect so much to be going on. I was just quite surprised. Oh my god. There's a lot going on in there. <laughs> it's just like another notch up from when um yeah it's kind of like the 2.1 but like times 10 yeah or the turbo just further out yeah yeah so i have all that nice on the all that nice fragrance but it's just broader for me yeah wow this this might be the unlock for this coffee mm. now we still have a bit of acidity mm -hmm. i'm not having a problem with it Usually the Allongés have less, but if the bargain is I have a bit more juicy acidity, but there were like, there were some holes before. I had a lot of top notes. Like I, I think of coffee like this as kind of like music where I've got some bass, got some mid, and then I kind of had a hole um, in like upper mid. And then the top notes came in and were sparkling before. That's yeah. how that, that uh, turbo was for me. And now I got this filled in section right here, mm. like the oboe section. Okay. Um, okay. Where it's it's not quite high, but it's it's mid to high. I really like that analogy, Justin. Yeah. That's, that's, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, but I, I, I there's no holes in the palate. Yeah, it's like um, you taste one flavor, and there's something fighting to be tasted afterwards, and, that, and that's what surprised me. Um, usually, it's a bit more, you know, a bit more mellow than that. It's like oh, okay, now this is coming along, but it's like. Bam, bam, bam. I was like, oh, what was I tasting before? Right. So that's that's kind of uh, where I'm at with this. So it's super interesting. Yeah, um, I, I think similar to what I said before, espresso is so hard to unpack complexity in coffee, and I think we've mm. touched into that pretty nicely. Yeah, and what's always striking, I'm going to show it, there's there's even even now, I guess a minute or two later, there's still some crema, yep. which always, like, it's light, 
and it was so fast, why is there crema? And it's because we actually had puck integrity, we had pressure, we just made an espresso, but we respected the low solubility of this bean right. by giving it a lot of water flow. Right. And traditionally, what people have done on espresso machines with light roasts is a lot of water contact time. Mm-hmm. And that can totally work. But this approach for me, this is kind of, this is always what I do at trade shows because once I have this dialed in, every damn shot is the same. They're always nice. And that filter paper on the bottom, I it, think it saved it. We went from three to nine one. bar yeah. with yeah. that. And it isn't just that increased resistance. It actually just increased the puck integrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. makes sense. Makes so, sense. So, uh, those are Sybaris nylon papers mm-hmm. that we've got. You can get it from their website if you oh, Google Sybaris okay. and you look at Sybaris Labs. Um, they ship out of Barcelona. They ship out of Spain. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Um, unless we got anything else, I'm going to say thank you to Cole for coming by. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much, Cole. Yeah. Thanks for Paul for making thank some good coffee. Well, and thanks for watching. Mm-hmm. <laughs>